Hey everybody, it's Corey from Unified Masters. So, um, it's been a really big period of deep integration since, um, since New Year's. If you can see, I just woke up. Um, there's just been a flurry of things happening throughout the collective. And a flurry of things happening, um, personally that are just moments, um, moments to reflect uh, moments to really take a look at what's going on in our lives and how we can best anchor in uh, the highest available timeline for ourselves and for the collective. And so with that, I want to discuss of like what, what the energies are kind of representing right now for us. So if we look at, uh, you know, 2020 in the numerology, in, in, the, in the status of the numbers of 2020, breaks down to the number 22, which is a build out. Uh, we look at the master builders building anew, uh, creating um, energetic architecture. We look at the um, the building out of societies, the building out new, new earth build out, everything that's been discussed as of recently with uh, what we are creating uh, for new earth. Part of that process is resetting the template. It's the void. It's the in-between. Um, and that's what right now very much so is, is it is the apex of the inhale right before the exhale. And if we think of an exhale, the exhale is a release. How do releases occur? Let's look at the micro and the macro of a release. How does one internally release? How does Gaia release? In what way, shape, or form does that occur? You know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, right now, I can feel it. There's a, there's, I've been sensing something on the rise for quite a little bit of time. And we sense this happening now. This release is extremely important for the build-out process. I have a phrase that, um, that I, I, or a quote I wrote a while ago, and it's about destruction being the root of creation. And um, destruction, okay, destruction has such a negative connotation to it. So let's remove destruction um, and let's use deconstruction. It's a tower moment, essentially. It's the, the breaking down because it is now, we're now exposing the foundation in order to build on top of that foundation. Okay. So this is what the theme for 2020 is going to be. Um, a lot of reconstruction um, of ourselves, um, of society, of cities, a lot of movement, a lot of change. Change seems to be the common theme that's occurring right now. So how does one deal with this change? Healthy detachment seems to be the best way. Recognizing, though, that there are going to be a group of individuals who are completely unaware of what's going on, or they might be tapped into a certain degree and a certain level, but they might not fully, fully comprehend it or get it. And so they're still going to be attached to their old ways and their old patterns, and they're going to resist the change. And what happens when there's resist change, resistance to change is the universe keeps shaking you up until you're forced to move. So uh, shadow exposure. Um, we're going to see more true colors shine. Um, there's going to be more blow-ups. Uh, there's going to be a lot of fear strung through regarding change. And in that, is going to cause a lot of acting out. It's going to cause it's going to cause what it's going to cause. And that's an interesting um, tidbit that's happening. And if you can sense, you know, my demeanor very much so in the last few videos has always been very, very happy and very upbeat. My demeanor's kind of changed. Well, and that's what this this uh, this year has kind of brought forth is since we're also stepping into a four year, okay. Which you know, if we break the if we break twenty two down, we deduce it even further to the number four. Number four is all about foundations and all about grounding. So it's been a very you know we have to thank the Capricorn energies for this very earthly time and very grounding time. But what it's provided is an opportunity for me to be fully in body. And to be able to see both sides of the coin. So it, it seemed that the end of 2019, at least for me, was extremely etheric. 
and pulling a bunch of uh, codes from the astrals and spending a lot of time up in the sky. And now that we've hit Capricorn season and then we're coming into this very much so grounding earthly foundational year, with the veil being so thin as well, it's now provided me the opportunity to remove the rose-colored glasses and to see both sides of the coin exactly for what it is. And um, a lot of that has been in diving into some aspects of not only my own unconscious, but the uh, a certain group, a collective group of unconscious that I've, I've stepped into. Universe kind of put me into, and then uh, I've been exposed to it to really see the state of what's going on and, and being able to like spend the last week just really contemplating, you know, what does one do towards shifting out these narratives and shifting out a lot of this stuff, especially since we've done a lot of work, um, you know, on my end, there's been a lot of work of clearing war trauma and war karma and the war programming. And, and I state that because you know, of course, we've been countered what we've encountered here in the United States, but I'm not talking about that. I, I'm talking about right now in regards to the Lightworker Collective. Um, and the one issue I see with my name of Unified Masters is that, uh, you know, then we look at what are we masters of? Are, are we masters of uh, masters of the spiritual world as we are connecting to our higher selves? Uh, are we masters of our, like what filters in play? Is the ego in play? Is the higher aspect in play? Is our oversoul in play? What are we masters of? And what I see is that these energies recently have really provided an opportunity for a lot of the ego mastery to come out, which is not taking ownership of the ego, but I've seen a lot of unconscious fight and discord um, in the Lightworker Collective. And it's really making me take a step back and being like, what the heck am I a part of and how did I dive into this? Well, you know, I am cleanup crew. That's one of my big, big aspects is to come through and kind of sweep all this stuff out. Um, it's been that way for a while and I've kind of grown to accept that being a part of my journey um, is being a cleanup guy and shifting those narratives out and clearing up those timelines. But this war narrative, okay. It's old. It's old. It's out of date. And it doesn't work. So right now, we've been totally in discussion, you know, uh, recently of like 2020, the best year to come, the best year to come, 2020. And yes, this is going to be a moment to reap karmic rewards. So if you've been, if you've been sending out positive energy, all that positive energy is going to come back. And if you've been, uh, you know, if you've been putting out not so friendly things and, and not playing so nice, those things will return. But what 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 really 2020 seems to be as of just the beginning of January is this is a time where the rubber meets the road. Okay, so what does that mean contextualized for us? Is it time to apply everything we learned into life? Okay, let's look at the the rise of what's gone on recently. Um, and I'm going to mention this once I am consciously making the effort to not discuss it again. And Samantha and I have even gone as far as to not talk about it in the home. Now I'm going to discuss what's happening in the U S with Iran. Okay. So as you see, we don't even really, there's been no discussion of a world war three coming out that I've seen. I've not turned on the news recently, but when these, when this went down the way that it went down. Okay. Everyone started to hop on and I'm, and I'm, when I say everyone, I'm going to speak for uh, spiritual Twitter. Okay. Cause that is the, by the way, that is the, the shadowed collective unconscious that I stepped into is a spiritual Twitter where if you, if you ever want a moment to really like see what's going on, at least under that light worker collective, step into spiritual Twitter and take a look at what's going on in there. It's it can be at least the, 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 the aspects that I've seen have been extremely unfriendly and reflecting a lot back to me that I need to work on within myself. So beautiful. Thank you, spiritual Twitter for doing that. Also showing me a lot of what I don't want to see, but what people are doing is they're, they start then to promote this narrative of joking about world war three. So I recognize that humor. Okay. 
Recognize that humor is an extremely valuable alchemical process towards transmuting and shifting out negative energy. But when it comes down to laughter about that narrative, we're keeping that timeline open and it completely exposed. And we're actually growing that timeline through even discussing about it jokingly. And what's really, really sad to see through all of this is to see these extremely powerful energetic beings that are giving life to hate and war, whether it be funny or not. And, and we see this with discord in the, amongst one another, the, the proving of who's right and who's wrong, bashing other light workers, bashing other, you know, I mainly see this with big tarot readers. So big tarot readers bashing other tarot readers, things of that nature. This is still fueling the same narrative. It's still a war. It's still a war narrative. Okay. And it's got to go. Everything right now is going to come out in the wash. So let's recognize that the, the energies are already in place in such a way that everything is going to come out in the wash. So, and, and all of the stuff that we've implemented and all the codes we've dropped and all the clearing we've done is going to come out. It just takes time. And that was the, the big, the, the big message that came through from, um, the Pleiadians, a little while ago is everything's done and signed and, and complete it's just going to take time for this stuff to go out but right now it's like the recognition okay that we are extremely powerful energetic beings okay especially those that have been doing the work especially those that have been doing the work towards bettering themselves been doing the shadow work they're stepping in the light work full time and they have raised their vibration they're you know they're 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 practicing self-love and the thing is, is that this, here's, here's what it really comes down to. If you're practicing self-love unconditionally, you are seeing through the eyes of love and, and you, and, and these people will choose not to end up in this discord. So that's just me. Okay. Granted the, the, the orchestration of all of this right now is extremely perfect just the way it is. So through seeing all of this, I have to recognize in myself, it's completely perfect. The universe scripted this beautifully. This is exactly how it's supposed to go down. But when it comes down to recognizing this, that we are powerful energetic beings with extremely powerful thoughts, we now have to go into the quote, with great power comes great responsibility. And this is where ownership of our thoughts, ownership we are. Ownership in the wind's picking up, I love it. I love you elementals, thank you. Ownership over our thoughts, ownership of our energy, ownership of what we are projecting is what is going to lead to the true mastery in 2020. So with this, we take ownership. What is this fueling? This content I'm about to produce, what is this creating? Also recognizing that it's important to speak your truth unconditionally. So if you have truth to speak, I'm not saying suppress your truth for the sake of dot, 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 but being mindful about how you express it. And I have to do this for myself too. Anytime I put something out, where is this coming from? Is this coming from ego? Is this coming from love? Also too, I am a light worker. So with that, I can be a trigger sometimes. I recognize that a lot of my, uh, a lot of my life has been spent in expanding people's awakening process through being a trigger point. That means to speak my truth, even when it's uncomfortable, but speaking it with love and compassion and letting my field be the trigger. I don't have to go out and start to intentionally poke at people. And so this is what that responsibility carries in, 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 in taking ownership of what I am putting out there is also too, is my humor are things that I'm putting out there. Is it creating an old reality? This is what I've had to own in my mastery of the middle path and recognizing how this all coincides. But this is what we really have to step into now is that with 2020, we kept saying, we're ready, we're ready, we're ready. Well, boom, right in the beginning of 2020, if you are in the United States or you are politically conscious at all or globally conscious, you will see what's going on. We've got things going on in Australia. We've got uh, you know the fires going on in Australia and a lot of focus is on there right now. Uh, we've got, you know, the political arena and me, I've had to consciously choose, okay, well, first off, I don't watch the news. So if I weren't, you know, on certain social media outlets, I wouldn't have noticed it and it wouldn't have been created into my reality. It wouldn't have brought up this fear, but it did. It's perfect just the way it is. And so now what is my choice here? My choice is to now be mindful of what I'm thinking about and to creating the highest trajectory 
for myself and for the collective. And we all have the power to do this. We all have the power to see with love, to focus on love. We all have the power to focus on the highest outcome for every individual involved. We can focus on healing. We can focus on truth. We can focus on compassion. And we can anchor all of this in to our day-to-day existence. We can also focus to see all that stuff for what it is, both sides of the coin. And then we can anchor love into that. Same with Australia. When we see Australia on fire, okay, we can stop and we can, it, we can start to throw love and open up the hearts to everyone in Australia. We can do things consciously on a day-to-day basis towards improving the world that we're in. But if we are talking about certain narratives with um, a joke, okay, or with humor, such as extremely disastrous events, recognize you can end up creating that into your reality. And what's even more messed up about this is that, uh, you know, think about the, think about, you know, things like the draft happening in, in, uh, in the United States. Think about you, um, I'm just going to dip into this potentiality for a second, okay, kind of exp- and, and be truthful about this. Let's say that this happens. Think about all the light workers that have to be drafted into World War III and would have to then make a conscious decision on what they would do in that circumstance with those, in, those that are in America if the draft were to occur and this were to happen. Okay, When you see this, you can start to see where this timeline ends. We can go quantum because we are essentially a quantum computer and we could drive down we could drive down that timeline for a little bit and see what happens. This is what conscious creation is, is that we get these set points. Boom, something occurs. Let's peer into that potentiality and let's go down it for a little bit. Go into a meditation. Whatever is shown to you is perfect just the way it is. Because this message is for you. And then you can consciously do something towards collapsing that timeline. By saying no, I do not click subscribe to your fear. I do not click subscribe to your war. I'm going to choose love and peace. And I'm going to inject that into my reality. And I'm going to choose not to focus on this program by doing by being extremely mindful of the decisions that I make every single day. So if I need to get this narrative out of my reality, what do I do? Maybe I should stay off certain social media platforms. Maybe I should unfollow some certain people. Maybe I shouldn't turn on the news. There are things you can consciously do to where it leaves your reality and then it's no longer there. This is taking ownership of your thoughts and doing what you can towards not allowing certain things to occur. So I'm not saying negate it and bypass it. Yes, it's very real. You can, you know, for me, when it came up, I was like, ah, shh, you know, this, this stuff just popped up. Okay, well, let's look at it. I spent a day looking at it. I felt, I felt it. I felt the fear. I felt the crying. I felt everything. I felt the collective. I saw, I peered into it. And I said, nope, okay. I'm not going to create this into my reality. And then I, you know, got some messages that people wanted me to make a video about it. So I was like, okay, you know, I'll, I'll discuss it in a video. But after this, I'm not discussing it anymore unless something more blows up from it. But from that event that occurred, from that attack, I've gotten uh, multiple perspectives from, from people. Uh, one of them being one of my best friends who's in the army, who is also a light worker who got a download and explained it to me in a certain fashion. And there was a a news outlet that that did confirm what it did mean. But anyway, beyond that, we're going to collapse that and shut that down now. This is what it's about, is that I have stated through the course of this video some fractures that I see in our foundations. And then I get to look at my own personal fractures too, at a physical level, at an emotional level, and at a spiritual level. What fractures are in my foundation that I can mend towards building out the strongest, most authentic version of myself in this coming year? And this is what's been really playing out recently. A lot for me has been physical and a lot of uh, recognizing that I still am running some self-sabotage programs. And so now I'm offered the opportunity to do something about it. I can change my diet I can change my regime and I can change ending this self-sabotage by recognizing it for what it is. Once I kind of take a step back and I dissect how it operates within me, which it takes some reflection and it's taken time to really tune in and to be, um, 
to be extremely mindful and observant over my patterns. So a lot of that required seclusion and a lot of that required deep internal thought for a very long time to to kind of become observant of my self-sabotage patterns and then recognizing when they start to play up, go, nope, I'm not feeding into this narrative and then collapsing that. And this is what the mindfulness approach is really needing to be taken right now with the veil so thin, we're going to see it, but recognizing what this stuff is, okay, including, you know, this recent news and including seeing this stuff. Like you're gonna get an intuitive hit. You're gonna go ding, okay, yeah, no, maybe I shouldn't buy into that or maybe there's something I can do here. Uh, maybe I can click unsubscribe. And what I mean unsubscribe, I don't mean literally like, you know, unfollow someone on Twitter or, or unsubscribe from someone on YouTube. What I mean is just not buying into the narrative. Being like, yeah, I see for what you, I see for what you are. I see it as a doorway. And if I go down that doorway, it doesn't lead anywhere. So I'm gonna keep that door closed and just and shift my focus. That's what I mean. And this is what's gonna be strewn out right now. We've got a lot of uh, power players that are still gonna be dropping things into the timelines to step us back into old ways. And we have to really stay strong and sturdy and keep the middle road and just be like, yeah, I, I see what you're doing, but I've done enough work and I'm not going to uh, not going to engage. I'm just not. I'm not going to engage. Because once again, your energy is so powerful that if you feed into that fear or you feed into that, that trauma, you feed into that whatever it is and give it life, You're breathing life into it. And so when I reflect on how 2020 is going to be through all the change and through all the discovering more of self and the building and the resets and really finding our authenticity, I ask, what are you breathing life into today? The best thing you can do is breathe life into yourself, into your joy and, and, and breathe life into your hologram. Because when you breathe life into your individual life, you're helping out the collective. When you build out happiness for yourself, okay, and the highest timeline available for yourself, if every light worker did that, we could end this entire thing right now. Well, we could start the process right now. As we know things, even though we're quantum, some things at a collective level take time. It's just a part of what's going on. Everything's coming up in the wash, right? So through this moment of the apex of the inhale, as we're about to... Let's recognize that there's a release, that we're breathing life. But in that release, sometimes it's not a fun release. You've got to go through some stuff, individually and collective, through that release. But we can keep the middle road by recognizing that at that release point, we're offered the opportunity to breathe again. There's two sides of this coin. When we take the snow globe and we shake it up, there's a flurry for a little while. And through time and patience, everything settles and there's clarity again. Things are reorganized. It's what I talked about with the, uh, if you look at my Emerald Code video, about the builder's decree as so we unpack we reorganize we rebuild and then we ship it it's kind of what this is we've unpacked a lot internally in the collective there's a lot of veils very all the veils are, are removed right now I, I, it's it's insane how how clear it is so with that we're we're offered the opportunity to reorganize our, our packaging step into alignment more and move forward how does that look for you? At a mental level, at an emotional level, at a physical level, at a spiritual level, how does that look for you? It's gonna be extremely individual and you know, I haven't really, I haven't gone up into the, the oversoul of the collective necessarily to, and, and been able to really take a peer into what's going on at a, at a collective unconscious level. I'm just looking at the levels that I've been exposed to recently. And, um, How's the restructuring looking for you? For me, it's been in bed for a majority of the day. Um, Samantha and I both have been asleep for most of the day. Um, you know, doing some doing some work with sessions and things like that, but it have been a lot of sleeping and a lot of not doing anything and learning to find joy without labels. 
because even here, you know, being a light worker and, and, and uh, doing what I do, there's still labels attached to this. And if I get too attached to those labels, the universe will rip those labels away from me. So the only label that I can learn to be comfortable with is the I am, is the here, it's the now, it's the full embodiment. Because everything here is, is, is temporary. We're in a, a time of extreme change. And the only thing that, it, that I've decreed and declared won't change is who I am at a soul level. Now, what I mean by that is that I'm still going to be Corey. You know, my beliefs are going to change. They're going to shift. That's the evolution of, of the spiritual awakening. But to not steer from who I am in the I am presence, which is everything and nothing all at once, remaining humble but remaining true and powerful in my stance of the I am. And just keeping it there and allowing myself to ride the wave of change. The plan's already been put in motion. Everything that Source needs to do in order to aid in Gaia's ascension is going to happen. Whether we're along for the ride, consciously or not, it's going to happen. And if you don't want to, if you don't want to ride the wave, I'm looking at a drone right now. Someone's flying a drone right above me. <laughs> Fun. If you don't want to ride the wave of change, Source is going to kick you around until you get on the wave. Plain and simple. So, with that, let's ride the wave. Healthily detach from everything you know <laughs> in a beautiful way. And just stand firm in your energy bubble, being conscious of the six foot radius around you, which I've talked about this before. Imagine that your energy bubble it has a six foot radius around you. And the only thing you're responsible for is input and output. That's it. Everything else you detach from. No courting, no nothing. And in that, you can ride the wave. You can ride the wave of change. You can pivot quickly. And it's a much easier way and a much easier existence. And best believe that whatever needs to exit stage left in your life uh, will be brought forth and it will have to exit in one way, shape, or form. Whether it's the, the visual that I got when I, when I got this download was a lot like, you know, mom saying, we're leaving, we're leaving for, uh, we're leaving to go on the trip in five minutes and we're leaving with you or without you. And kind of like that, that, uh, not literally source is going to ascend without you, but like, like you're coming whether you like it or not, essentially. Everyone's ascending. Everyone's ascending. Sorry, I'm being shown some things. So with that, buckle up. This is gonna be a beautiful year. I'm gonna state that right now. It's gonna be a beautiful year. But we have to look at two sides of the coin. There can be beauty in creation as well as beauty in destruction. There's beauty in a full cup just as much as there's beauty in the void. Okay, They're both leading to the same outcome. It's the peak and the trough of a wave. The ups and the downs, the ups and the downs. Zoom out, you see the entire wave, and it's beautiful because you hear the tone. But when you zoom in and you recognize that there's a flow to this, and you understand from an open heart perspective that that is just the way the universe works, and it's important for the integration and the expansion, then you recognize that it's beautiful just the way it is. And this is where we learn to love the beauty that is creation and the beauty that is within us, and we allow what needs to go to go, and we allow what's, what is meant to be, to be, and to stay. And remain in faith, remain true in who we are, remain in our heart. And uh, anything that is not aligned with love, at least for me, this is what I'm doing. If, you're, if, 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 if your 
saying something to me that's not aligned with love or I see something that's not aligned with love, I don't give into it. I don't buy into it. Not my responsibility. My choice right now is love unconditionally. What I do within self, what I do in service, what I do on a day-to-day, and I inject that everywhere I go to end the war narrative within, the war narrative without. We've been talking so much about the war narrative in the masculine and all the internal war, and this is where we land, an opportunity. The micro hit the macro. What are we going to do? Choice point, solution-based. How do we stop this? Best possible outcome, highest timeline, love and light. Unconditionally. So with that, much love and respect to everyone out in the Weberverse. Um, I've been, been waiting for a little while to put out a video. I've been called to not do it, but I've assembled enough pieces to put out a video. And I'm actually going to accompany a light language with this. Um, later, I'm going to record it, and it's going to be called uh, Seeing Change with the Eyes of Love. It'll help you to open up your heart a little bit more. The elements are just, they're agreeing with me right now. Being able to see change through the eyes of love. And uh, being able to take a look at all this through love. And then making that choice point. So uh, thank you all so much for your continued support. Um, and all the new subscribers, hello. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the fun and the magic that is awakening. Um, if, you are, if you are new and have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Uh, I've got sessions available as well. I still have my donation sessions and all my other sessions still available. Membership group, all that. All the links are going to be in the descri description box. So please go ahead and, and search through that content um, and look through past videos too. I have a bunch of videos out that, that coincide with various topics. Um, I have a peace anchoring exercise that's perfect right now for this. I'm glad I came up with it when I did. You can refer to that peace anchoring exercise and you can practice that on a day-to-day -day basis for yourself. I said that we're going to need this in the next month and boom, it goes to show that it's completely right, <laughs> that we're going to need to anchor as much peace and love into everything we're doing. And you can actually set the intention to invite this, that peace and that love wherever, not only just where you're at, but you can set the intention to, to send that energy wherever you'd like in the globe. Uh, and, and yeah, um, there's a bunch of really great content up, uh, here and on other channels that can help you during this process if you need any help with the Ascension process. So, uh, that's all I got guys. Much love and respect to everybody out there in the Webiverse. And I will see you on the other side. Namaste.